guys, Trisha's here. Yay, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> so we're gonna do another mukbang. So I wanted to do a mukbang because I'm tired. <laughs> I just had a baby and I was like, I need something I can just upload. But I really wanted to talk about my whole birth experience because I posted my birth video, but I don't really talk about like what I went through, what drugs I took, like how long it took, the baby's <laughs> measurements, all stuff. So I want to tell everything, but I can't do a mukbang without Trisha. <laughs> she's the queen. I'm so excited. I'm so honored. I'm so excited to hear about it because I'm obsessed with yes. babies and birds no and No question is off limits. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I have so many. So we're going to get all this out. I love how we're eating while we're talking about your birth. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh yeah. My I favorite. don't even know what I got. I just got Ooh. two of them. You don't like... Pregnancy, birthing stories, you're gonna hate this and you should turn it off. Especially we're gonna be eating while we're talking about everything. Okay, oh yeah, Hi. orange chicken, so good. All right, so, let's start from the beginning. And you can ask me anything, right. okay, anything. So it started with, I was 36 weeks pregnant, which is basically like, I, was, I had a month more of pregnancy to go, like three-ish weeks to go. And I was in bed, and I had to pee in the middle of the night, and I got up to pee, and I went and sat on the toilet, and felt like a gush of something that was not pee. Oh my God. And I looked in the toilet, and there was like nothing in there, really. I was like, did my water break? Like, because I didn't know. And I looked it up, and it was like, your water probably didn't break. A lot of women think their, women broke, <laughs> their water broke, when really they just peed. So go back to bed, and lay down, and then when you wake up, in 30 minutes, like take, it was like take 30 minutes and then go back to the bathroom and if there's a little bit of water in your underwear, then like maybe your water broke. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, so I got back in bed and like adjusted my body. And when I did that, it was just like, whoosh, like so much fluid came, like it was like, like in the movies. Like really? Like water breaks in the movies. Like it was like gush, and it was like, it made a gushing sound, it was like, Poosh. like it was so gross. Really? Mm -hmm. oh, I've never heard that before. Yeah. Oh my God, it's so crazy. And I was like, Oh my god, my water broke. So, <laughs> I woke up Eric, and we weren't ready at all. We didn't have a hospital bag packed. Like, we totally weren't ready. And then... You did it? No. You know, people, oh, because you thought it was going to be a month. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, that's so crazy. I've never heard of it a month early. That's so crazy. Yeah. Well, he's big to the baby. So, I'll skip all the, like, panicked going to the hospital part. Um, I think that's so interesting, though. Like the hospital part, I think is like the fun part. I think that's like, oh my god, it's happening. Okay, here's I'm gonna say this: you hear your whole pregnancy <laughs> that birth is gonna be the worst thing ever. Mm -hmm. Like the whole time you hear like, birth is so hard, it's so horrible, it's so scary. And I was scared. I had like an anxiety attack one day about it. We had a birthing lady come and like teach us how to do birth, and <laughs> she left, and I just sobbed and like freaked out because it was just so scary to me. Mm -hmm. And everyone, oh. my little bunny. Everyone told me how horrible it was gonna be, and so now that I've done it, I'm like, I'm not bad. <laughs> really? That's so interesting. Yeah. Because throughout your whole pregnancy, you're like, I hate being pregnant. You're like, don't yeah. let that scare you, but I hate it so much. I hate being pregnant. I do not recommend. <laughs> yeah, so do you. I hated being pregnant. So I thought birth was gonna be worse than pregnancy, mm -hmm. and for me, it wasn't. For me, pregnancy was worse than the birth. Really? Mm -hmm. So, but every woman is different. Every body's different. I have friends who are pregnant and like didn't feel any symptoms. They're like, I love being pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was not my situation. And you're really small. Like I thought when you would give birth, like because your hips were so small and everything was so small, and I thought, oh my god, that's gonna be so painful for you to get a baby thought, out of there. <laughs> I mean, it was. It's not like it didn't hurt, but it just wasn't as bad as everyone said it was gonna be. This is the worst like, pain in the whole world. Like it is. <laughs> is it? It's the worst pain you felt? Mm, no. The worst pain, well, the contractions are really painful, but here's the thing. I had something called pelvic girdle pain in my second trimester, like my four or five months, mm -hmm. where my pelvic bone literally like was ripping apart and was like grinding against itself. And I had to be in a wheelchair, I could barely walk, I was sobbing every day, it was so painful. My pelvic bone just like was destroyed. Oh. And that pain was worse than childbirth. For me, because childbirth pain, like the contractions go away. So like, you know, okay, here comes a contraction, have five deep breaths and then it's over. So even though the pain is really, really horrible, you know it's gonna end. Whereas like my pelvic girdle pain or my fainting or my barfing or my heartburn or any of the pains during pregnancy didn't end, it was just forever. So. Oh my God, and did you go to the bathroom when you had the baby? No, I wish. I wanted to <laughs> so bad. 
I've bed. heard that's like a thing. Uh -huh. That would be my biggest fear. Even when I go to the bathroom myself, I'm always feel like that's what I feel like to have a baby. I'm like, I bet this is what it feels like to have a baby. I want to. <laughs> I wanted to so bad. Um, okay, so here's the deal. So I go to the hospital, and they check me like, yes, your water's broke. And they said I was two centimeters dilated. So you have to be at 10, your vagina, your cervix, or whatever has to be 10 centimeters in order to push out the baby. What do you mean? It, like a hole, like it opens up? Yeah, like your cervix <laughs> has to like open up to 10 <gasps> centimeters. Okay, so, or something. I don't know the science. I just know you have to be 10 centimeters. Something has to be Somewhere. 10 centimeters. <laughs> so I was two centimeters when I got there and my water had broke. And they're like, okay, great. I was having contractions and they're, they are very painful. Contractions are very painful. For me, they're painful in my hips. Some people feel it in their back, in their stomach. So I felt it in my stomach, but my hips were crazy pain. So I look back on my birth and I'm like, it wasn't that bad, but Eric and Rachel were in the room, my sister and Eric were in the room, and they said it was like I would disappear when I was going through the contractions because the pain was so bad. So they said they'd be like, Colleen, I wouldn't be able to talk. You just like, like I'd close my eyes and I would moan and groan and like it was like a I was possessed. Like you don't, do you not remember it? Like were you like black? I out remember kind of? it. I remember it, and I remember it being painful. I just remember like I had to focus on getting through the pain. So I couldn't talk to anybody. I couldn't look at anything. I couldn't hear anything. Like because the pain was so bad that I had to just focus on getting through it. Mm. So like that's why you know. But I remember it. So then they came in and they offered me a drug, but it wasn't an epidural. They offered me a narcotic that they're gonna give in, like inject into me to help take the edge off of the pain. And I was like, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> so no judgment to anyone who does it anyway. Like no drugs, drugs, C-section, <laughs> natural birth. I am like, if you get a baby out of you, you are awesome. Like, I don't judge people. There's a lot of judgment around this. Like oh. this video, I'm sure I'll get a million comments about how I'm a horrible mom because I use drugs. I could never, I could yeah. ne that's like my number one thing. I would turn off comments if I were you. Just like people just like, even early on in your pregnancy, I mean like we get it, you're pregnant. I was like, <laughs> They told me to stop showing that I was pregnant. I was oh like, my. I literally can't. Like, <laughs> Meanwhile, every video you post about pregnancy gets like way more views. That's why I was so confused. Like, obviously people want to see it because you're mm -hmm. getting way more views mm -hmm. on your pregnancy videos than anything else. Right, it was really confusing. But anyway. <laughs> people are awful. God, I love spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did it actually eat? It's, oh, that looks good. Mm -hmm. Is it just regular? Yeah, it's just spaghetti and meatballs. Mm, that's good too. Mm -hmm. So, um, so then they came in and they checked me again after like an hour and they said I was still only two centimeters. But when your water breaks, you have to get the baby out because the water that comes out, the amniotic fluid, is what the baby breathes. So the baby breathes fluid essentially inside of you. And so if you wait too long to get the baby out, the baby could get hurt. You know, like it could, I don't know all the details, but like I'm assuming the baby could suffocate because oh. that's what it breathes, you know? So if it doesn't have its water to swim around in and breathe and get hurt. So you have to get the baby out in a certain amount of time. So I hadn't progressed at all in like an hour. I was still two centimeters. So they're like, let's give her Pitocin, which is a drug that forces your body to have contractions. And so it forces you, your body to like start trying to get the baby out. And I've always heard that Pitocin is really painful. Like it causes really painful contractions. But they had just given me the narcotic drug, the shot. And so I was like kind of high. And I was like, they're like, do you want an epidural now? And I said, no, you just gave me the narcotic a couple hours ago. So I'm, I'm good. And they're like, are you sure you don't want an epidural? Because the Pitocin makes this very painful. And I was like, yeah, I'm good. Like, I can do it. Oh, my God. So they gave me the Pitocin. <laughs> and the contractions started coming fast, like every like minute or two. And it was so like that I remember being painful. That was so painful. The contractions? The contractions were extremely painful. Like, Eric, weren't they bad? So bad. <laughs> so, so bad. Were they like bad. period cramps or were they like No, it's um yes, I guess. Like extreme. Like period cramps times a billion and like really horrible hip pain, pelvic pain, vagina pain, like I can't really explain it. It was just excruciating pain. Like to the point where I couldn't control what was coming out of my mouth. Like I was like, <laughs> like I was like making crazy sounds. And so after like 15, 20 minutes of that, the nurse could hear me and she like came in. She's like, someone's ready for an epidural. <laughs> Would you say it like that? Yeah. And I was like, yes, I am, please. <laughs> so an epidural is like a drug they put in your spine. So like they give you a big shot, like a tube, like an injection. What do you call it? Like an IV essentially in your spine. 
And it stays in there? And it stays in there. Oh, I didn't know. So you have all these IVs in your hand, mm -hmm. and then they put one in your spine, and you can't, you have to lay down for the rest of it, because you can't get up, because mm. your legs are numb, and numbs basically everything. Oh. So they, um, I laid down, and everyone says the epidural is really painful to get. It's not, it's just like scary, because they're shoving something in your spine. So it's like. Like it could paralyze you. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, you can't move. You have to stay still. Is it in you it. while you're giving birth? Yes. Oh, so it's like an, oh, so it is an IV. Yeah, it's an IV. Like a uh, giant needle. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. See, so it's scary. I and mean, that's the worst part about the epidural is like the thought of it. It's yeah. like, oh God, that's horrible. Because it's like, but I was having a contraction while they were putting it in me and they're like, you can't move. Don't move. Don't move. And I was like, because ah, I was having a contraction. So I was in pain and I couldn't move. It was horrible. So, but they put the epidural in and it was life <laughs> changing <laughs> like i don't understand like i i think it's so cool and admirable when women are like i'm doing it with no drugs like that's so f so cool mm -hmm. and i'm so like i admire you like that's amazing i could not do it like it the pain was so bad like the epidural made it so that like i could relax i took a, like a nap i was having contractions and i took a nap wow like, really yeah i mean there was still some pains like but um you know i had to lay down i couldn't get up and Oh, I had a catheter in because you What's can't, that? which is catches your pee, like so I had a bag of pee. Because you can't pee. Yeah, because everything's numb, so you have no control over anything. Oh my god! So like it's like sucking out your pee. So I had a catheter inside wow. me. Wow. Um, so I was hooked up to a million things. I had oxygen mask on me. Like I looked insane. Um, but it got easier once the epidural happened. It felt like things progressed really fastly. So like they came in every hour and they're like, oh, you're six centimeters dilated. Oh, you're eight centimeters dilated. Now you're 10 centimeters. And 10 centimeters meant I could push. And so, get the baby out. Mm -hmm. So I was stoked. The Pitocin worked. Um, the epidural worked. If you are on the fence, if you're pregnant, <laughs> thinking about getting pregnant, if you're on the fence about an epidural, Get it? Strongly <laughs> recommend. I strong like I could not have gotten through it without the epidural. Yeah, I don't know how people do it. I don't I'm know how shocked. Does like it. you're a hero. You get through that without an epidural. Like that is crazy. Because I mm -mm. was able to push out a baby out of my vagina <laughs> without like screaming and crying. I was just like it focused. Was fine. You and said it. when I came in, you're just like, yeah, like wasn't that bad? Mm -hmm. I was like, really? Mm -hmm. Just because I thought since you had such a complicated pregnancy, I was like. I was like, oh no, she's gonna be like in pain once that baby comes out. And you're like, it was. Good. Well, I'm in pain now um, because. Oh yeah? <laughs> I wanna hear about this. So. You told me briefly when we were getting our mm -hmm. coats. So. <laughs> one thing I was afraid of was ripping. Oh. So. I was really scared of vaginal birth because I was afraid of things ripping down there because you hear horror stories of everything ripping. Well. <laughs> that's what I did so Oof. Um, basically I pushed for 30 minutes we started pushing at 5 30 p.m. so my water broke at 5 30 a.m. by 5 30 p.m. I was pushing the baby out so I only pushed for 30 minutes which it's my first baby and that's kind of unheard of like how quick it all happened usually with your first baby you're at the hospital overnight trying to push and get them out labor's really long and hard it was, that wasn't my experience. Like to only be in labor for 12 hours and only like active labor of like super pain for a few hours, like is pretty good. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I started pushing at 5.30 and he was out by 6.04. Oh my God. So it was only a half hour of pushing. I think, and you push when the contractions come. So it's not like you're pushing for 30 minutes. It's like, here comes a contraction, three pushes and take a break for two minutes. Here comes a contraction, push three pushes and then take a break for a minute. You know, like, so it, it wasn't like constant. I think I pushed maybe a total of like eight times or something. Do you push like you're going to the bathroom? Yes. That's really how yes. you push? Yes, that's how they tell you to push. <laughs> really? So the nurse came up to me and she goes, okay, you've heard that women poop when they <laughs> give birth. And I was like, yeah. She's like, and you've been told, like, I don't want you to be afraid of pooping. I want you to poop. I really? Like, <laughs> because that's the same muscles. She's like, I want you to poop. poop. Like, oh push God. like you have the biggest poop. Get it out. Like, push out a poop. Right. I was like, okay, and she's like, I want you to push really, really hard. So basically what an epidural does, it doesn't make you numb. It makes your nerves numb. So like I could feel the baby coming out. I could feel the contractions, oh but I couldn't feel pain. I felt like it was like sliding or something. It didn't feel sliding. <laughs> it felt tight. It felt like it felt like a head coming out of a tight space. It right. felt like 
contractions, it felt like things were happening. It felt like I was trying to poop, but there was no pain involved. So that's, yes. the epidural just takes away the pain. Um, so I pushed for half an hour and then he came out and it was like the most amazing moment of my life because the second he came out of me, I felt like I came back in my own body because for nine months I felt like I wasn't me. I felt like sad and depressed and emotional and awful and miserable for my whole pregnancy. Like I hated it. So the second he came out, I literally felt like it was like spiritual. It was like, I felt like a baby, like the baby came out and I came back into really? it. Really? It was crazy. And then I was just like the happiest wow. I've ever been in my life. You were right away. Right away. Right away, the happiest I've ever been in my life. Oh yeah, have you talked about that? Like how you thought like maybe you'd have like postpartum, like people warned you? Yeah, people warned me that I would have postpartum depression, might have it, some people, a lot of women get it. Yeah. Which is you get a rush of hormones after you have the baby and sometimes it can be negative, have a negative effect on you and you can get really super depressed. But I think it was the opposite for me. I think my pregnancy, I had that. And right. my pregnancy, I was super depressed and sad. And then now that I had the baby, I'm like the happiest I've ever been. Um, but the, so I, I pushed out the baby and then the doctor is like, all right, we have some tearing. So they're, they're cleaning up the baby and Eric's with the baby and I'm looking at the baby and Eric and I'm listening to my doctor go, okay, well, I'm going to check for some tears. <laughs> and he goes, all right, we have an internal something, something tear. I didn't know any of the words mm. he was saying. I was like, okay, I got one tear. That's not bad. <laughs> He's like, we have an external something tear from here to here. Okay, that's not bad. So we have a second degree tear <laughs> internal here. And I was like, okay, three tears. Oh. And he kept going. Like the list, like, it felt like it never ended. He's like listing oh. all the tears I had. And then one of the nurses goes, and a partridge in a pear tree, Jesus. She <laughs> <laughs> was like, oh my God. Like, I was like, oh no. So I literally tore everywhere, oh. like from all the way back to the booty. Like Did they say everything. why people tear? Well, because a huge baby is coming out of a hole this <laughs> big. Know, like, like, it's got to like, rip it. Why do some people and not others? It's just like, well, because, love the well, here's the tea is you're supposed to be stretching out your vagina. Like, up until pregnancy, you're supposed to be doing these, like, st stretching it out and massaging it with, like, oils and doing certain exercises and all the stuff to strengthen your muscles down there and also to stretch out the skin. Mm. And I didn't do any of that shit. Because uh -huh. I was like, I'm tired, and I'm not going to stick my fingers in there and like stretch <laughs> it out. Like, I don't want to do that. So I do recommend doing that stuff because I know women who did that stuff and they didn't really tear. So like, I think because I didn't do all that stuff, maybe that's why. Also, he's a huge head. Like, hats don't really fit him. <laughs> so, um, but I didn't feel any of the tearing. Like, if I didn't have the epidural, I would have felt every rip of my Ooh. vagina. Uh. So now th they put in stitches. And the funny thing is, like, the doctor, we were like, how many stitches are there? And he's like, um, we'll know when I'm done. Like, as he's stitching. So I pushed for one hour. He stitched me up for an hour. Wait, I pushed. Yeah, wait, hold on. Did I get that wrong? I pushed for half an yeah. hour. And then he stitched me up for an hour. It took him an hour to stitch everything. Oh, my God. Are you going to throw up your food? No. Um, I'm like, I love it, actually, but... So I feel like I'm very stretched out, so I should be fine if I'm a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I have like a gaping hole. <laughs> you might be fine. Yeah. You know. um, but yeah, the, mine now is a gaping hole. So now I'm good to go. But now you're sti stitched, right? You're tight again? No, well, there's a million stitches in me that are, you bleed forever. Mm. I gave birth 10 days ago and I'm still like gushing. Because that's. Sorry, this is so good. No, no way. No. Not for six weeks, at least. Six weeks? At least. I didn't mind, I don't want a baby. <laughs> Six yeah, six weeks at least. Damn. Because it has to all heal. It's torn to shreds. Like everything's torn to shreds. I think it's on top. your salad. <laughs> As we talk about gushing. Being blood torn to shreds. Yeah. <laughs> this video is going to be demonetized in five seconds. Um, no, but it's like educational. I feel like when you have like educational stuff, I feel like, I feel like you could show. I've seen my births on YouTube. Like as in like from the angle of the baby coming really? out. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you can see them on there. So I feel like like they left that on there if it's like it's like educational. Because in my birth video, I show the baby right after he comes out, and he's like bloody and got, you know, he looks yeah. weird. But you didn't get to monetize on that, did you? Mm mm. But I was worried about it because it like is kind of like a lot crazy to see like yeah. a baby that just came out of you. <laughs> I know when they first come out, you're really lucky because like when they first come out, I think they look crazy, and like mm -hmm. even up until like six months, like I feel like babies look crazy. Mm -hmm. But yours looks like a person. Like, it's got little eyes and a little oh. nose. Like, well, I think he's cute, but I'm his mom, so I'm like... No, it's a cute baby. Awesome. I've seen some 
I've seen ugly babies, even my own family what will be like, oh no, there's some ugly babies. But then they turn cute, but like I've seen a lot of ugly babies. Even Jason does that too. He's always like, when they're like under a year, he's like, they're not cute. But yours is really cute. I think I think certain ones are, and I think yours are really cute. Okay. I think it's cute. Yeah. He's adorable. But, so I don't know about my tears and how much or what they are, because every doctor we ask to, we, every nurse, because you stay, I stayed in the hospital for two extra nights and um, to heal, and because my baby was a preemie baby. He was seven pounds, nine ounces, 29 inches long, I think. Wow. And um, so he's big for like, for a preemie, he's really big. Moose, what's wrong? My dog's like freaking out. Moosey, what's wrong? Hmm. You think they're like jealous of your baby? Yes. Because he gets all the attention now? Mm hmm I feel like that happens with animals. Mm hmm mm hmm That's sad. Yeah. I want to do a pet class and you're like, be careful. He's a little biatch. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> well, he's a bitch whether or not I had a baby. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he's just not a nice cat. But I love him. He's just not nice. Um, <laughs> but I'm trying to think of other things I wanted to say. Yeah. So, I don't know what's going on down there. Because no one would tell me. I was going to say, it's so bad that when I would ask the nurses... How bad is it? How many stitches do I have? What tour? They'd be like, it's really bad. They said that? That's what they would say. That's they wouldn't so tell weird. me what happened. They'd just be like, just know it's really bad. Mm -hmm. You need to rest. You need to lay down. Like, and so Ooh. it's 10 days later and I'm still in a lot of pain. And I can feel, you can feel it all. Because I'm obviously not on epidural anymore. So now I can feel all the stitches and the wow. tears. You don't take painkillers? No, they give me painkillers. So you take those? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, ding. Because like, it's probably like, I've had, um, I don't know how to say it without anyone has, I had vaginal surgery before. Mm -hmm. And like, I know I was on painkillers for like a month after. Really? And it hurt so bad. But I, but I didn't push anything out. I was just getting, you know, tightened or whatever. But um, it was so painful. That's why I was like saying, if you're not on. You got tightened? Yeah. Have you talked about that online? Yeah. Okay. I mean, not really, but yeah, I've talked about it in videos before. And I was like, but I don't care. Yeah, okay. But, um, it just like I couldn't pee or anything like that. Like it just it was like so painful. Like it was just like I like I cried. It was just like burned. It was so awful. Like I could not pee. I couldn't. Yeah. Oh, girl, the first time I had to poop. Ooh. Because <gasps> I had stitches all the way up to my butt. Oh. Did you? Were you just like blood? Gushed. Oh. And it was. I sobbed. It hurt so bad. So it took me three days. I was scared to poop. So it took me three. I didn't poop for three days. Wow. Because I was scared to poop, and I could feel that I need to. And I was like, I just can't do it. And finally, I was like, couldn't. I felt my body like trying to get out. I was like, I have to get the thing yeah. out. Yeah. I was still at the hospital, and I, I it was so painful. And I came out of the bathroom, and there were two nurses in my room, and I came out, and I was just crying. I was like, that was really painful. And I was like, I pooped. Oh. Was your baby with you, or were they home? Um, no, my baby was with um, Eric in, in the room. Yeah, in the room because we were. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, nice. But yeah, it was, it was, it was very. And even still, like now, even still, pooping is like awful. And I know that like there will be tons of blood. Oh, it's horrible. That's so crazy. Did you have like a sweet? No, we kind of. We got like the biggest postpartum room. So you give birth in a labor and delivery room, and then after you give birth. They take you to another section of the hospital called postpartum and they put you in another room and that's where you stay for a couple days while you're recovering and the baby's recovering and um because it's traumatic for you and for the baby it's traumatic right. for the baby too to go through that to like because their head has to like get all misshapen to fit through the Ooh. canal and like so you have to make sure the baby's okay you have to make sure you're okay and um so that's so but we had a one of the bigger rooms so there was two beds in our room. So like oh, I got nice. a hospital bed and he got a hospital bed because a lot of times they don't give the husbands. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Like he sat on a chair or something like that. Yeah, a lot of times they have to. Oh but we got, we got really lucky. They had it available. So. And you can only have, you had you got two people in the room. Usually they only have yeah. like one. Yeah, so actually we had three. My mom was in there too. Wow. Aww. So my mom, my sister, and Eric were all in there with me. Oh my God. And they were great. They were really, really good. I think my favorite part was um, Rachel, <laughs> like at one point I was, the epidural made me shiver. Because like cold? No, just, just because trouble. it was, yeah, just like, like a seizure. Like, so I was kind of doing that. The whole oh my time, gosh. <laughs> which was really weird. I didn't expect that. And, um, my sister at one point I was like shivering and I was like, I really didn't feel good and I was in pain. And my sister came up to me and I was like, and she's like, Ooh, <laughs> and it made me laugh. And I was like, okay, that's what Aww. I needed. I needed like, I don't need like a doula, like to calm me down and make me think of rain and earth. Like, yeah. I need my sister and everyone to like make me laugh and like mm -hmm. make fun of me. So like, that was fun. And there was like one point, <laughs> I took it out of the birth video because it was just too gross. But there was one point where like, 
I had, oh, that's the other thing I wanted to talk about. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love this whole mukbang, it's just me talking to you. No, I love it. I love it. Me eating so, and talking about going to the bathroom and bleeding. I'm like, ooh, this pasta is great. So this I really wanted to talk about. Um, when I was pregnant, something like freaked me out big time. I got like something called cholestasis, I guess it was called. Um, so one night I was itching, and I talked about it in my vlogs that I was having scary symptoms, but I never said what they were because I didn't want people to Google it and like freak out. But um, I woke up one in the middle of the night, like itchy palms and itchy feet, like really, really, like I wanted to scrape my skin off. Like I would have happily if you gave me a knife, I would have cut off my skin. Ooh. Like that's how bad it itched. And so I thought, oh, what a weird pregnancy symptom. I'm gonna look that up. And so I looked it up. Um, I. If I had my phone, I'd look it up. So I'd, oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read to you what yeah. I read as a pregnant emotional woman. Oh my God. Because I thought, oh, I'll look this up and it'll tell me how to deal with this. Okay, cool. Did you think you were dying? Worse. Yeah, I think you didn't tell people because you know the internet be like looking up. I know, well, and they were all the time were like giving me advice. Like I had really bad congestion my whole pregnancy. Like I couldn't breathe like ever. And um, I remember I would like talk about it and be like, I can't breathe, I haven't breathed in months. Like I'm like dying. And I remember one time someone tweeted me like, have you tried blowing your nose? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, thanks. I didn't think of that. Let me just try that. I could not, I could not. <laughs> I was like, Especially when you're pregnant, I would be, I would go off. You were so tame. I wouldn't go off on people. <laughs> no, I was trying really hard. Okay, I can't find what I saw. Yeah, I can't find it. Anyway, so what, the, thing, the first thing that popped up when I searched it was, it sounds like you have cholestasis. I think that's how you pronounce it which is your liver is leaking bile into your bloodstream and it can get into the baby. And the, what happens when you have it is you either have early labor or you have a stillbirth. Oh my God. And so I'm nine months pregnant thinking mm. my baby's gonna die. And so I was a disaster. I was sobbing oh for days God. and days and days. We talked to my doctor, he's like, you're fine. Like, if you have it, we're gonna run these blood tests. We'll give you medicine, you'll be okay. We'll monitor the baby, everything's gonna be fine. So he- Okay, there we go. Ran Stop recording. <laughs> I just talked too long. So basically my doctor was just like, you're gonna be fine, we're gonna do these blood tests. If you have it, we'll give you medication. You're gonna be pretty miserable, the baby's fine. Um, they monitor the baby, we did an ultrasound. We went to another doctor, she checked on him. She said he looks great, he's just really big. Um, which is fine, he was just a fat baby, which I was, and so was Eric. <laughs> so uh, I got the blood test done, and we were gonna get the results back five days later. So I had to, for five days, panic that my baby was gonna die, and like there was nothing anyone could oh do. So God. like, and I was being dramatic, like everyone, the doctors, everyone was like, you are fine, right. your baby is fine, we promise. But it's just like, once you get that in your head. That's all you think about. That's all you think about. So like, mm. even though everyone checked me, and we did all the tests, we did everything right, the doctors were like, everything is fine. Still, I was like, I read that he could die from it and I just like freaked out. Mm. So I think that's why I went into labor early, a month early, because that's one of the th things that happens when you have that. It happens to one in 1,000 women. Oh, um, one, one in 1,000? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's like big though. That's yeah. Like, not that like rare. So one in 1,000 pregnant women get oh. cholestasis in the, the last trimester of their pregnancy and I got it and five days later my water broke. And so it really did make me go into labor, but it was painful, like the itching. It feels like there's fire ants biting you from underneath your skin. How long did it last? Uh, the itching? Yeah. Or, was it like constant? Like no, it night? got really bad at night. So all night I'd wake up like itching. I'd wake oh. up holding my foot by my face, itching my feet. Like in the middle of the night I'd wake up and I'd be like clawing my feet. I've never heard that. I've never heard anyone that. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, it was awful. But I didn't tell anyone that I was going through that because I was like, I don't want people to freak out or give me advice. Like the last, that was the last thing I Or did. even just like putting it out there that like, oh, well you're yeah. baby why die. Yeah, I, I didn't want that yeah. at all. Um, that was really scary, but anyway, my doctor came in when I went into labor and he was like, well, I got your blood test results back, you have it, and I was about to prescribe you medication for it, but the only cure for it is actually to give birth. That's the cure for the disease, I guess, right. to give birth. So he's like, so we're doing the cure right now, so you're fine. Wow. But, um, and the so second, you did have it. I did have it. Oh. And the second your baby comes out, by the way, to any mothers wondering or pregnant women wondering, Every symptom goes away. The stuffy nose, the pelvic pain, the stomach pain, the cramps, the heartburn, the cholestasis, like every single symptom I had immediately was gone. When you gave Right, birth. when I gave birth. Everything wow. goes away. That's so weird. And you feel like totally fine now. I feel, well, except for my vagina is ripped right. to shreds, but yes. You're not like sick and you, like, you haven't eaten much, so you're not like super hungry. Like, no, you're... I'm fine. Like everything's great, wow. except for my vagina is destroyed. <laughs> and kind of my butt too. <laughs> 
<laughs> and the worst part to be destroyed, that was, I, I couldn't imagine like pushing something through, like the surgery alone, like I've had like 12 surgeries and that surgery alone was like never again, like that was so stupid. Really? It was super yeah. bad? Yeah. I mean, I had like a hole, like a, when I said a gaping hole, I had a gaping hole. Really? So I had to like stitch it back, but like, yeah, <laughs> and I didn't have a baby, but still like I'm pushing something through, I don't no, know how much did he weigh? Seven pounds, nine ounces. Oh, it's not like too chunky. No, he's fine. Yeah. I was 10 pounds when I was a baby. That's a chunky baby. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what I was, but 10 pounds is like a bowling ball. Yeah, it's huge. Oh. So, but yeah, I can't believe he went through that area. Like, I can't believe that happened. Did, could you opt for a C-section if you wanted? Yeah, anyone can. Like, you can. And I, we I honestly wanted to. Like, Eric and I were like, vaginal birth sounded so scary that we were like, yeah, we, want we want to just cut it out. But the recovery from a C-section is way harder than... Really? Why? Um, Cause it's like, because it's a major surgery and it's a huge incision and, um, right. you know, there could be complications just like there could with any surgery. Right. But uh, we were like, why, why, shouldn't, why don't we just get a C-section? Like, we kind of wanted one. And then I was like, well, let's try for vaginal, but just know that, like, if they say, okay, we need to give you C-section, we'll be like, all right. Yeah. So... Yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess some people, like, I think would want it. I feel like I would want to just give birth just to feel it. Like, just to, like, go through it. Well, I feel like, <laughs> there's the thing is people are like, don't you want to feel it? Like, don't get in the pool. Don't you want to feel it? I'm like, oh, well, I, I don't. <laughs> but. Oh, um, yeah. But I did feel it. Like, you do feel the, the baby thing, coming yeah. out. Like, you just don't feel any pain. I felt everything. Like, when they said he's crowning, I'm like, I can feel that he's crowning. I could feel his huge head just chilling outside of my vagina. I could feel him come out completely, like. I felt everything. I just didn't feel any pain. But see, that's what I would want. I'd want to feel it, but not be in pain. Yeah, so I that's, natural. you'd yeah. be an epidural girl. How do you get through the water? How do you put like a water birth? Um, yeah, I don't know. You just sit in a bathtub <laughs> and push it out. That's I what I would want to do. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't even consider it. I was laying in the bed just like... See, the, a water birth, I don't know if you can do with an epidural though. Oh, you said it natural. Because, and can, I don't know if the thing can go in the water. Epidural oh, yeah, thing. probably not. You probably have to do it. And also your legs are numb. You can't walk. Because after I, after I gave birth, they took me to the next room, and I was like, I have to pee. And so they took me in with, like, a walker wheelchair thingy. And I felt fine because I still had the drugs in me. And so they were like, all right, so now you're going to lift yourself up off the wheelchair and get on the toilet. And I was like, okay. So I kind of stood up. And they're like, hold on to the handrail. And I was like, I'm fine. And I like, as I was putting my hand onto the handrail, it collapsed. Like, cause my legs were numb and I didn't even know. Oh my gosh. That's so crazy. Mm -hmm. I didn't know they went numb. I had actually no idea what after was. I thought it was like a pain. Yeah. Like well, it is a pain. That's, it's confusing. It's like, I say they were numb because they were, but I could feel them. Like, I just couldn't, my nerve, I don't know how to explain it. Cause like, I could feel my legs. It's not like, like if you touched it, I could feel that. Like, mm. but I don't know how to explain it. There's just no pain. There's, and I couldn't walk on them. I'd fall. That's so, it's really weird. It's probably like when you get like liposuction or your butt done because they put like a big needle and kill all your nerves when you get liposuction and you can't feel it. Like you could literally like not feel it. Like you could, but you know what I mean? Maybe that's what it How is like. liposuction? I feel like it, cause they take a big needle and they just, have you ever seen it like on Snapchat? No. They just take a big needle and they kill all your nerves, like all your fat cells. And so like they just go in and out, in and out. And so you're all bruised up. And so you're numb for like, I don't know, maybe like a month or two. And even like your arms, so like nothing can hurt it. Or even your butt, like you, you can't sit on your butt. You gotta like lay on your side and stuff cause you literally can't feel it. What was the mm -hmm. most painful thing besides the vagina? Yeah, the, um, the lipo on really? your stomach because they kill so many like nerves and fat cells. Like you can't feel it. And then you feel your nerves starting to come back like over the month and then it's like, it feels like you just, you know, like when you sit on your leg, that's what it feels like on your stomach. Is that what your felt like when you like sit on your leg and it goes like numb? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels like that. Like it feels like before the tinglies come, you know, like right. when it goes to sleep yeah. and then it starts to come back and like tingles a little bit. Okay, it goes, yeah. like, right before the tingles come back. <laughs> yeah. That's so, that's a, that's a weird feeling though. I don't like those feelings. Yeah. That's exactly. They might not like the epidural though. Yeah. I probably just shouldn't have pregnancy. It's probably like. I don't have babies anymore. No, you might love it. You might love You might have the best friends. No, I was such a baby. I don't think I can, like, even when I get my Botox, I'm like, no, it hurts so bad. I get passed out. Really? Yeah, I'm really a baby when it comes to pain, but. Oh, then you won't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hire a surrogate. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I wouldn't do it again. What? Mm-mm. Have a baby? Mm-mm. You just want one? No, we want more kids. We want to adopt, probably. Uh um, but like, I could not do it again. Like that's how horrible really? my pregnancy was. That's how like traumatic it was. I couldn't do it again. Wow, that's like breaking mm -hmm. news. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no. But we want more kids. I love having a baby, and I right. love kids. I've always wanted to be a mom, so I'm like excited about more kids. But like the thought of going, and who knows? Maybe in three months I'll be like, <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like right now, the birth I could do again. 
like easy. I could do the birth again. Give me an epidural. I can bust out another baby. The pregnancy. Um, the pregnancy was so traumatic for me. Like I could never do that again. Really? It was horrible. Because it wasn't just physically painful for nine months. It was emotionally, mentally, like horrible. Like the amount of times he had, like Eric had to like hug me and tell me like everything was going to be okay. Because I was a dis like sobbing disaster. Oh. Like it was not good. That's so interesting that I was like that bad that you wouldn't have another one. No, I would not. Crazy, because like Rachel's all, or Jessica's all like, I'm ready for another baby. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, like four kids. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I feel like we didn't really eat a lot, but I- I ate, I literally have three. I, I was, was like, like going like this. No, I know. We actually did eat a lot, because Cheesecake Factory ate like all my chicken. You want to eat mine, or are you good? No, I'm, okay. I'm full. I'm looking at the cheesecake. Yes, factory. yes, oh my gosh, let's eat some. I didn't know. I didn't, oh shoot, oh, here's one fork. Okay. Um, so anyway, do you have any questions about oh my god, anything? or did I answer everything? I no, feel like I said everything. no, no, no. I feel like there's like a, I think I feel like I have a thousand questions. Here's okay. this one, and then there's a plain one. I don't. This is gonna be like a three-hour mukbang. No, <laughs> I love watching long videos. I love them. Um, okay, so this is the Oreo one. Yeah, we Oreos didn't even say what we were eating. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we just started eating. Um, okay, so no, you answered a lot actually, because like. I didn't, I don't know anything about birth. Oh, well, I'll ask you the one yeah. that I asked Jason. <laughs> this is, and Jason literally was like, are you serious? Because I'm like, I feel like I'm really smart. I feel like I like know a lot about a lot of things. But Colleen texted me and she goes, um, she's like, yeah, oh, I, oh my God, I should try your breast milk. Yes. Oh do you have to latch on or can you do it? No. Like <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to latch on. I need to like squirt it into like a cup. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, when you're, how, why do you get milk in your boobs when you're pregnant? Why do you get milk in Yeah. To feed the baby. But how does that come about? Well, it's your body just knows. Um, the female body is crazy. It just so, naturally does it. Naturally does it. Just like when you get pregnant, your body naturally knows to grow a placenta, knows to like push all your organs. So like all of my organs, like your intestines, your stomach, your everything gets squished up to like here. So mm -hmm. when I was pregnant, my stomach was up here, all my intestines were squished up here, my abs ripped apart and were here and mm. here. Like it all goes out of the way so the baby can grow. Mm. So your body knows to do that. And so your boobs know. And actually, what, what happens in your boobs when you're pregnant, not all women can produce milk when they're pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, usually it happens after the baby came. I'm super like milk machine. So I have a lot of milk and I've been producing milk for a couple months, but it's not milk at first. It's called colostrum. It's yellow. It looks like a thick pea. In your like boobs? Mm -hmm. It's like thick yellow, like neon yellow. Oh my God. It's called colostrum and it's got tons of like protein in it, tons like to make the body, the baby grow. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, you have a puppy. So you kind of <laughs> notice like you feed puppy food or you feed kitten foods to kittens and puppies. And then when they get older, you feed them different food. Like That's because kitten food and puppy food is full of fat. So like to make the baby kitten or puppy grow faster. It's the same thing with babies. It's like colostrum is full of things to make the baby grow fast. And then after a few days, your milk comes in. So now I'm doing milk. Oh, okay. So now it's white. Now it's milk. Now it's like tasty. Well, it's tasty then too. Oh, did you try it? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I love the idea, like, I don't know, I also like watching people breastfeed. People always have like this weird thing about it, but I think it's like so amazing. I'm like, wow, that person's like eating off another person. I love it. It's so interesting to me because I always feel like the worst. It's painful. Breastfeeding. Yeah, that's what I heard too. Um, it's getting better now because I'm getting used to it and he's getting better at it, but like, it's, it hurts. That's so crazy. Because it's like your nipple being sucked for like 20-ish <laughs> minutes every two hours for days. So it's like <laughs> sucked, hard sucking raw, like oh. every like hour or two to three hours, you know, whatever your baby, however much your baby eats, sucking it raw for like 20-ish minutes. Like, oh, I can't even So of imagine. course, you, no matter how good you are at breastfeeding, like your nipples get sore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, when you were in the hospital, my, okay, so I like, like Lifetime movies, okay. and so I always feel like when you're, like, when you give birth, mm -hmm. did you, like, stay with the baby the whole time? Like, how did you know they didn't switch your baby? You stayed in the room the whole time. You stayed in the room. The baby stayed in the room. The baby was in my room the whole time. Well, how come They don't take it away. So. Or what? Or. Or he was with him. Okay, so yeah. Oh. So we never wanted either one of us to be away from the baby. One of us always had to be with the baby. That was like our rule. And the hospital was, of course, you know, they were great. They also put sensors. They put bracelets on mommy, daddy, and baby that all match. So we all have the same serial oh. number. And they put an ankle bracelet on the baby. 
that um, go, sets off an alarm if he goes near the doors of the hospital. <laughs> oh, okay, because I wondered. You know, you always hear about babies being stolen or No, they, well, be, well, and that, I guess, has happened, and so that's why they have, like, crazy security measures now. I like the name Flynn, too. It reminds Thanks. me, did you name him Flynn because of Tangled? Um, no, we named him Flynn because it's a family name, so, like, it's oh. in his family. His great-great-great-great-grandfather was a captain of a ship, and his name was John Flynn, and the name kept getting passed down. It's Eric's middle name. It's his dad's middle name. Oh. So, um, we knew we wanted to pass down that name, but we didn't know if we wanted it to be his first name or not, and then, um, we ended up, it just kept coming back, and, like, we couldn't decide. We had a bunch of different names picked out, and then... We are at the hospital and we're like, we don't have a name for this baby. Like, what are we gonna name this baby? And I asked him to get something out of my purse. And in my purse was a little pin um, that we bought when we were in Ireland, because I was pregnant when we were in Ireland. And we got a little pin that said Flynn, because at the time we liked the name Flynn for a baby. And so we bought it, thinking like, oh, if we name him Flynn, we'll have this little cute pin from Ireland that we can give him. And we put it in my purse, forgot about it. Like, I don't even barely remember buying that. And then we were at the hospital and he found it and he pulled it out and he's like, oh my God. And we hadn't seen it since we were in Ireland. Oh my God. It was gosh. like a sign. Like, oh, I feel like that's gotta be his name. Yeah, you didn't have a name for him, right? The first mm -mm. couple days? Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, no, we were calling him Baby. I call him Bunny. Oh, that's yeah. He does look like a little bunny with his little nose. Yeah, he's like cutie. So, mm. anyway, maybe I should have him say hi. In the... Yes! Well, speaking of mukbangs, he might need a hooter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is he needing a booby? Come here, Bunny. Do you need a booby? Oh my gosh, no. Mm. Are you sleepy, bub? Do you need a boob? I think he might have your nose done. He does have my nose for sure, yeah. my big honking nose. No, it's so cute. I love you. Aww. Alrighty, well, we're gonna go. Thanks for being here. Oh my god, thanks. I'm so sorry. sorry. I, this whole mukbang thing was just me talking no, for an hour. I, was, I didn't, didn't say anything. No, we didn't even, like, get together, and then I was just always, like, missing each other, and I, I was just like, and I, like, love you. Like, this is, like, fitting, because, like, before you announced your pregnancy, we did I this know. cheesecake. We did Cheesecake Factory milk bag, yeah. and then I announced my pregnancy. And then now and you have the baby, and, and now we're doing another. Did, I know. I thought about that. That was part of the reason I was like, oh, we should just do Aww. cheesecake, because, like, yeah, that was... This is crazy. Cr like, literally, last time I saw you is when I found out you were pregnant. I know. Baby. Last time you saw me, we had a mukbang, ate Cheesecake Factory, and you found out I was pregnant I while know. we were doing the mukbang. I know. I know. That was so crazy. And now, here he is. Oh, my God. He's so cute. He's so cute. Okay. <laughs> all right, well, thanks for watching. Go subscribe to Trisha yeah. and follow her on all her things. <laughs> and goodbye. Subscribe to Flynn. No, <laughs> subscribe to Flynn's YouTube channel. We're trying to get him to a million subscribers before his first birthday. Love you guys. Bye. bye.